Welcome to Rusha TV and today we're back on the balcony here at Prospect Oval. There's finals weather in the air, it's a great day, the sun's out and we're joined by Mitch Clisby who's uh, had a very consistent season. Mitch, thanks for joining us. No worries, thanks Tubbs. Just got him out of a weight session which he which he doesn't need because of the pipes he, uh, he does possess when he puts the Guernsey on. But uh, firstly mate, a, a great win on the weekend. Uh, yeah, it was a very entertain, entertaining game of football I thought. The, uh, the ball was moving up and down the ground pretty fast and uh, yeah, by the looks of you guys when you came in after the game it was uh, it was pretty hot out there. Yeah, it was an intense game, and it was obviously nice to get the win in the first final. Um, for a lot of these boys, it was their first sort of senior final, and they all played pretty well. And yeah, as I said, it was intense, um, and just really happy to get the win. Probably a question I've been asked a few times is, uh, what was the reason <laughs> that uh, 20 goals were kicked up one end when there, there wasn't a lot of breeze out there? Well, it was bizarre. The scoring end was sort of into the mm. a slight breeze, so. I don't know, you tell me. No, I've got no idea, mate. I was hoping that the players could uh, answer that question for us. No but, idea, uh, sorry. I'm happy if we're kicking 12 goals up one end to win a game of football. So. We'll take it, yeah. Um, quickly with the reserves on the on the uh, Saturday, they had a, a pretty pretty quiet first half and, uh, and Glenelg were really, really good in that opening half to uh, you know take the game away from us. But um, the boys responded great after half time and uh, got themselves into a second semi. Yeah, it was like two different games, the first half to the second half, but the boys sort of rallied and um, got the job done and yeah, to have two teams into the next week of finals was really good. Yep, and uh, the our reports of the uh, the coach got a little uh, little upset at half time and he, he might have uh, tore, some, tore some paint off the walls. Yeah, I heard there was a few tears at half time, um, but uh, I mean, it must have worked, so um, he might have to do it more often. Yeah, no, no, great response from the boys there, and they've got a big game coming up this week. Uh, on your own form this year, mate, so you've obviously played mainly across half back in a variety of roles. You had a few shutdown roles, and, and then you've been given the license to run and carry and, and create, which you, you're very good at. Uh, you've been pretty happy with your season? Yeah, it's been probably one of my better seasons. I've just enjoyed being at half back again, and, um, and yeah, obviously. When Kari gives me that role to shut someone down, I do it. But if he gives me a license to get off and get on my bike, I'm enjoying that as well. So it's just nice to yeah get my hands on the footy again. Yep. And the back seven uh, has been pretty consistent this year with Tanner, yourself, Cameron, Wilkes, uh, Brock Castries played every game down there. Spain has drifted in and out. Um, Macca Slee for a young kid has played all year. It's, you got a good good group of guys back there that just believe in each other. Yeah, it's nice to keep that sort of back six, back seven together for for most of the year. Um, obviously. It, helps us on field and um, we get a bit of consistency in our game and we're predictable to each other um, and it's I think it's definitely helped us get into the position we are this season and just uh, just a quick one mate uh, just on the weekend I've seen a, a familiar face uh, pop, in, pop into the uh, change rooms after with a bit of bromance for yourself with uh, Geordie McKenzie the club champion from a couple of years ago back in town to watch the Roosters have a win on the weekend uh, you're pretty happy to see Geordie yeah he reckons they uh, rolled the red carpet out for him on um, on Sunday but yeah he, he was Happy to be back. Obviously, they had no finals no. over in country Victoria and he, he wanted to come back and watch the Roosters in the first final. And, yeah, we got the job done, so he was one uh, happy boy. Yeah, we might have to get him back if he's going to be our uh, our little secret weapon to get us a few wins. Um, mm. I'm sure we'll, we'll invite him back. But uh, on to the Bagheri medal tomorrow night. Um, you know, big event for the for the uh, Sandful. And, uh, yeah, we've got a, a couple of guys that should poll well. Um, in your opinion, who's going to uh, have the most votes from the Roosters? Well, if you ask around here, I think nuts. Orman reckons he's going to poll pretty well um, but he says that every year but I, I think Maxi Thring will poll well early in the season um, and we'll probably I, I think he'll hold on to the most votes for us I reckon yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see you get some votes hopefully hopefully we see the number 10 Mitch Clisby uh, poll a few and um, maybe Trop will get a couple and I'm sure that uh, if Alex Barnes doesn't get one against Port Adelaide we'll um, mm. That's me, so sorry guys. Um, Rude. <laughs> um, yeah, if he doesn't get the three votes against Port Adelaide, that'll be, uh, you yeah, know, I don't know what I'll believe if, uh, if he doesn't get the three there. Yeah. But, uh, on to this week's games. Uh, the reserves uh, head to West Adelaide to play Nord in a second semi final, the winner to advance straight through to the grand final. Um, they had a very good game a couple of weeks ago. You, mm. you think the boys are up for it? Yeah, definitely talking to a few in here, they're, they're ready to go and they think they probably should have got the Chockeys last game but didn't quite get there. So, yeah, as you said, if they can get it done on the weekend, straight into the, the GF. Yep, and uh, onto, the, uh, onto the league game on the Sunday, we, we face up against the Double Blues, 12-15 uh, at Adelaide Oval. Um, massive game for the football club and one we, we hit with confidence. Yeah, it's huge um, and, the, and the boys are ready for it and I guess after the win on the weekend, our focus went to Sturt straight away. Um, once the Eagles knock them off so it's a huge game for, for us and the footy club and we want to keep going so. yeah. and thoughts uh, just one last uh, question for you mate
about the, the thoughts on the uh, the unbelievable banner that uh, got put together through the week? Well, yeah, it was unbelievable. We couldn't even run through it. There was there was that much tape on it. There was a few boys holding onto their neck, and so um, yeah, amazing job from from the the boys who who put it up. And um, yeah, it'd be it'd be nice to see what they come up with this week. Yeah, no, they they're not shy in uh, making the biggest banners that I've seen, uh, especially at Sample level, and they do an amazing job and mm. put in a lot of hours. So great work to those guys that do it, and uh, I'm sure we'll see another great banner this weekend. So, as we said, we got the uh, reserves this week at City Bazaar Stadium. At West Adelaide 2-10 versus Norwood in the second semi and then we head to Adelaide Oval on the Sunday 12-15 start to take on the double blues we hope to see a heap of red and white down there like there was on the weekend and we can uh, cheer on another win thanks guys